Hi, hello and welcome to another edition of China Teacher, where I share with you what it is like to be an English teacher in China. Today, I'm going to be shooting a two-video series talking about drugs in China and the death of a foreigner. So, if you want to know what I have to say about this, don't go anywhere and roll that intro. Be a real bad boy. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Um, first of all, what I would like to do is I would like to talk about what I think about drugs in China. Um, the second video is going to talk about, well, how to handle the death of a foreigner. So just stay tuned and subscribe to this channel if you want to know um, what the situation is when something goes really, really bad. Now, the first thing that I'm going to say is that uh, I thought long and hard about shooting this video and I decided that perhaps it was it was a good idea to do it. Um, last Christmas I was having, um, I had the thought, I had the idea of perhaps getting uh, permission or get some uh, authorization from some people in the government to go visit some of the Colombian people that are in prisons here in Dongguan due to mostly drug trafficking. I was hoping to bring some I don't know, uh, love, a uh, message of hope, or at least some company uh, to them. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that, but I'm sharing here with you the, the fact that the idea did run through my mind, although I wasn't able to execute it. So that convinced me to the fact that this video is an important one to make. I have to say two things first. Number one, I don't do any drugs. Um, I don't smoke, I've never tried, never. Um, I know that might be very hard to believe, but it's the fact, it's true, that's what it is. The second thing that I want to say is that you, you might think that China is um, untouched by drugs, but that is nothing further from the truth. Um, I know a lot of people, I have some acquaintances that use drugs on a regular basis and from being with them and talking to them and, and experiencing what it's like, I can tell you that in China you can take anything you, you look for, you can find. Basically, you go to a bar and if you ask somebody, somebody gives you a phone number, you call somebody and all of a sudden somebody is delivering something to your apartment and it goes from there, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's a, it's a real problem, not just for foreigners, but also for Chinese people. So from weed to, to ice to cocaine, just about anything. So yeah, it's, it's out there. The first thing I'd like to say is that if you're a person who needs drugs just to get by, just to live, you can't live without them, either weed or whatever, just consider not coming to China. Just think long and hard about whether it is a good idea for you to come to China. I'm not here to patronize you. I, I, I have a philosophy of live and let die. <laughs> um, live my life and let others live their lives the way they want to. But at the same time, and having said that, you're, you're coming to a place where the rules are very different. If you ever get caught with drugs, you're put in jail and just sit and wait for your execution. It is that simple. It's, it's very different from your home country, perhaps. So it is, it is not a game. It is, it is not a minor offense. It is a very serious matter. So think again, if you're that kind of person. So what I would like to do today is share to, with you the story of, of a teacher that used to work for me. Um, her name, let's call her Anna right? Um, she was a very young girl, 23 years old, from uh, Kazakhstan. Um, she had been working in Shenzhen for the last two years and she came to the center asking for a job together with her boyfriend, uh, a guy Paul from America. He was a bit older than him. Well, the arrangement was that they would work in Shenzhen Monday to Friday and they would come Friday night, uh, Saturday and Sunday to work for me. So we started working like that and everything was okay. Um, but very soon I realized that they 
they like to party, they like to party quite hard. And though it was not too much of an inconvenience or not too much of a, a problem with Anna, with Paul there were a lot of reliability issues, so after a few months I had to let him go. Uh, at that time I talked to Anna and said like, look, well I know that you're kind of like a package deal, you're, you're together, but I would like to know um, if you want to stay. And she's like, yeah, I'll stay and, and what I'll do is I'll get an apartment and, um, and I have no problem to continue working for you. So we did that. Looking back at, at Anna's demeanor and her behavior, it always seemed to me like she was in a rush, you know, like, like, like a revved up engine, like, like an energizer bunny, um, which had good effect on her teaching because she was very dynamic, very energetic, and, and the kids loved that. Um, but it, it never rang a bell in my head that perhaps it was drugs. Um, it just seemed to me like, well, she's always running because she has a very hectic life. You know, she finishes work at four and she comes to start work here at five or seven, so uh, from Shenzhen to Dongguan, so she's always running, you know. So it didn't, it didn't strike as unusual, but now that I think back, yeah, it was a little bit strange. So what happened was at the end of September, um, three, four years ago, um, it was the last day of September. We were about to start the national holiday, October 1st, um, which is a Chinese national day. And we had the last lessons of, of the, the term, the, the last lessons of the, of the month. Um, as it often happened, she came in running a little bit uh, caught up in time and she went straight into her room um, and she started teaching. I was teaching right next to her. And after a few minutes, I heard like, um, I'm coming back, I'll be back, I'll be back, give me one second. So that sounded to me a little bit unusual, so I opened my door and I saw him walking down a corridor and turning right into the um, teacher's room. So I followed her because it was a little bit unusual. As I passed by my assistant, I said, what, what, what's happening? I don't know, she went into the teacher's room, she said. So I opened the door and I saw her like leaning against the table, holding her head, uh, clearly not feeling well. Um, I asked her, what's wrong? What, what's going on? I said, no, 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 nothing. I just, uh, I got dizzy. I got dizzy. Can you get me some water? But she didn't even look at me in the eyes. She was just kind of like hunched back and, and covering her eyes, covering her face with her hand. So I turned around to go out and get some water. And all we heard, me and my assistant who was behind me, was brum. She just dropped on the ground, on the floor. Um, I immediately went to, to see if she was still breathing, which she still was. Um, so I turned to my assistant and said, look, get everybody out of the center, cancel all the lessons, that's it, and close the door behind you and uh, tell the other assistant to, to call an ambulance as soon as possible to get here. Um, so while she was doing that, I kept looking at her and trying to smack her in the face, like, wake up, uh, Anna, please uh, look at me, what's going on, come on. Um, now when my assistant brought some water, we tried to give her some water to drink or pour some water on her face, kind of like to give her some shock or something. Um, but she wasn't, she wasn't coming back. Um, by the time the ambulance came in, she had already stopped breathing. Um, and, uh, well, basically they took her to a hospital and uh, we followed the ambulance, me and my assistant, and, um, well, she was declared dead uh, upon arriving to the hospital. Very young girl, lovely girl, hardworking, lots of dreams, lots of ambition, and it ended just like that. Um, I know that it was drugs, but I will reveal um, the process by which we realized that that's what, what, what it was um, on the second video when I talk about how to handle the death of a foreigner. But let me tell you one thing. In China, everybody's your friend when you're having fun, when everything is going fine. 
but as soon as the music stops, you're going to be left alone. I called Paul, her boyfriend, to let him know what had happened and to see if he could help me contact somebody from either her family or who do we tell, right? As soon as I told him the news, he just said, sorry, I can't help, hung up. And that's the last I ever heard of him. So take that as a lesson. When things go bad, when things go south, you're left by yourself, you're alone. Nobody will put their hands on fire for you. So don't do it. It's a very, very different story uh, doing drugs in China as opposed to doing drugs in your home country. You're alone here, truly alone. So guys, that's, that's the end of this video. It's not a very pleasant video, but it's, it's something that, I don't know, it's been, it's been in my chest uh, for quite some, some time now, a few weeks now. So I figured, yeah, why not? Why not make this video? So let me know what you think about this topic. And uh, uh, yeah, if you, if you have had any experiences or anything uh, related to the use of drugs here in China and uh, whether you agree with me, that is not a good idea to use drugs in China. All right. Well, that's it for now. See you on the second part of this video. Bye for now.